I'm an immigrant from Venezuela, and I've lived in the U.S. for six years. If you ask me about my life as an expatriate, I would say that I've been lucky, but it hasn't been easy. Growing up, I never thought that I was going to leave my homeland. I participated in my first student protest in 2007, when the president shut down one of the most important news networks. I was getting my bachelor's degree in communications, and that was the first time I realized I couldn't take free speech for granted. We knew things were getting bad, but we never saw what was coming: an economic crisis, infrastructure breaking down, city-wide electrical blackouts, the decline of public health care, and shortage of medicines, disease outbreaks, and starvation. I moved to Canada with my husband in 2013, and we always thought we moved back home when the crisis improved, but it never did. Nearly all my childhood friends have left the country. But my parents are still there. There have been moments where I've called my mom, and I could hear people screaming and crying in the background as tear gas bombs exploded in the streets. And my mom, as if I, as if I couldn't hear it, would always tell me, "No te preocupes, Juanita. Estamos bien. We are fine. Don't worry." But of course, that I worry. It's my parents, and I'm 4,000 miles away. Today, I'm just one. Of more than four million Venezuelans who've left their home country. A lot of my friends are Venezuelan immigrants, and in the last few years, we've begun talking about how we could make a difference when we live so far away. That is how Call for Venezuela was born in 2019. It began with a hackathon because we are all experts in tech, and we thought we could use our tech skills to create solutions for people on the ground. But first, we needed to find some experts actually living inside Venezuela to guide us. We'd see so many other hackathons came up with wildly ambitious, incredible technological solutions that sounded great in theory, but ultimately failed to work in the actual countries they were intended to help. Many of us have been living abroad for years, and we are detached from the day-to-day -day problems that people are facing in Venezuela. So we turn to the experts actually living inside the country. For example, Julio Castro, a doctor and one of the leaders of Médicos por la Salud. When the government stopped publishing official healthcare data in 2015, Dr. Julio began in collecting information himself. Using an informal but coordinated system of cell phone communications, they track available personnel, medical supplies, mortality data, disease outbreaks, compile it into a report, and then share that on Twitter. He became our go-to expert on healthcare in Venezuela. Luis Carlos Díaz, a widely recognized journalist who reports acts of censorship and human rights violations suffered by the people of Venezuela. He helps us make sense of what is happening there, since the news is controlled by the government. We call these people our heroes on the ground. With their ex expert advice, we came up with a series of challenges for hackathon participants. In that first hackathon, we had 300 participants from seven countries come up with 16 different project submissions. We pick the projects with most potential and continue working on them after the event. Today, I'll share two of our most successful projects to give you a taste of the impact we are having so far. They are called MediTweet and Blackout Tracker. MediTweet is an intelligent Twitter bot that helps Venezuelans find the medicine they need. Right now, in Venezuela, if you get sick and you go to a hospital, there is a good chance they won't have the right medical supplies to treat you. The situation is so bad that patients often get a shopping list from the doctor instead of a prescription. I live the need for this firsthand. My mom was diagnosed with cancer in 2015. She needed to have a lumbar puncture to get a final diagnosis and treatment plan, but the needle for this procedure wasn't available. I was in Venezuela. At that time, and I was seeing my mom getting worse in front of me every day. After looking everywhere, we found the needle in a site that is like the eBay of Latin America. I met the seller in a local bakery, and he was like buying something on the black market. 
My mom brought the needle to her doctor, and he did the procedure. Without this, she could have died. But it's not just medical supplies; it's medicines too. When she was first diagnosed, we bought her treatment in a state pharmacy, and it was like practically free. But then the state pharmacy ran out, and we still had six months of treatment ahead. Six months of treatment ahead. We bought some medicines online, and then the rest in Mexico. Now she's in her third year of remission, and every time that I call, she tells me, "I'm fine, don't worry." But not everyone can afford to leave the country, and many aren't healthy enough to travel. That is why people turn to Twitter, buying and selling medicines using the hashtag Servicio Público, meaning public service. Our Twitter bot scans Twitter for the hashtag Servicio Público, and connects users who are asking for specific medicines with those who are selling their private leftovers. We also pull the location data of those Twitter users and use it for a visualization tool. It gives local organizations like Médicos por la Salud a sense of where they have a shortage. We can also apply machine learning algorithms to detect clusters of disease. If they receive humanitarian aid, this could help them to make better decisions about the distributions of the supplies. Our second project is called Blackout Tracker. Venezuela is currently to, through an electricity crisis. Last year, Venezuela suffered what some people consider the worst power failures in Venezuela history. I had two long days without communication with my parents. Some cities experience blackouts every day, but you only know about this on social media. The government won't report blackouts on the news. When the power goes out, many Venezuelans we quickly tweet out the location with the hashtag "sin luz," meaning without electricity. Before their phones ran out of battery, so people around the country know what is happening. Like many tweets, blackout tracker scans Twitter for the hashtag "sin luz" and creates a map using the location data of those users. You can quickly see. Where the blackouts are happening today, and how many blackouts have happened over time? People want to know what is happening, and this is our answer. But it's also a way of holding the government accountable. It's easy for them to deny that the problem exists or make excuses because there is not official data on it. Blackout tracker shows how bad the problem really is. Now. Some people in Silicon Valley may look at these projects and say that they are not major technological innovations. But that is the point. These projects are not insanely advanced, but is what the people of Venezuela need, and they can have a tremendous impact. Beyond these projects, perhaps our most significant accomplishment is that a movement has been created, one where people around the world are. Coming together to use their professional skills to create solutions for people of Venezuela, and because we are partnering with locals, we are creating the solutions that people want and need. What is so great about this is that we are using our professional skills, so it comes easily and naturally. It's not that hard for us to make a difference. If someone from San Francisco were to hire professionals to create solutions like MediTweet. Or blackout tracker, it would cost a small fortune. By donating our services, we are making a bigger impact. If we were just to donate money, and you can do the same thing—not in Venezuela necessarily, but in your own community. In a world that is more connected than ever, we still see how specialized communities can be living in isolated or in silos. There are so many great ways to help, but I believe that you can use your professional skills to connect diverse communities and create effective solutions through those relationships. Anyone with knowledge and professional skills has a powerful force to bring hope to a community. For us, at Core for Venezuela, this is just the beginning. Thank you.